Let's take a look at how we can create an eye blink animation in Das Studio. Hello everyone, I'm Jay and on this channel we're helping you become better 3D artists with Das Studio. In today's episode I want to show you how to animate an eye blink on a Genesis 9 character. Here's something that I have prepared earlier. This is Angela and she's all super happy and her eyes blink every once in a while. If we go and zoom in a little bit closer we can see that. And uh, there's more going on in this animation than just the eye blink. But animation is a deep topic and we haven't really covered that on this channel just yet in all that detail. So I thought I'm going to start some and you know the eye blink is the easiest one I can show you. I'm going to show you how to create this as a pose preset as well as an anti block so that you can reuse it on other characters. Let's get started. I'll start with a brand new scene and just the Genesis 9 base figure. I'll zoom in on the face that I can see the eye blink. We're going to make it so that you can apply it to your custom characters if and when you need them. So you don't need hair and clothing and all that in your scene because that's just going to slow the computer down quite considerably. If you're talking animations, you're always concerned about fluid playback. So the first thing I'll do with Genesis 9 is I'll head over to the parameters tab and under mesh resolution, I'm going to switch this from high resolution to base resolution. Resolution. So that gives my computer a lot less work so that, you know, animations can be played back a little better. Next thing, we need the timeline for this adventure. And the timeline is currently docked at the bottom by default. So if you click that, then you see the timeline coming up here. If you don't have it, then right click in any of these fields and head over to add pane and then find the timeline from here. That'll open it. So if I accidentally close it like so, then I could go and bring it back with timeline like so. Also important, the timeline has various options to display itself. Some are more complex than others. If your timeline doesn't look like this with all these icons at the bottom, then go and right click on it and choose view mode at the very top and change it so that it displays the advanced view. There's also basic and intermediate views, but we need the advanced view for what we're going to be doing. Next, let's have a look at where we actually find the eye blink, just so that we know, you know, where that is. So once again, with Genesis selected on the parameters tab, I'm going to go and right click and select the Genesis head here, because that's where that morph is. You can also find it on the top node, but under post controls, head under eyes, I can find eye blink. And that is the property that we're going to animate. Notice I'm not going to animate everything. I'm just going to animate this one property and I'll show you how to do that. So if I left click and drag over that, then I can see this is what I want to animate. This is in fact a controller that animates both the left eye and the right eye. So if you wanted to animate these independently, sometimes on cartoon figures, one eye closes a frame or two earlier than the other one. You can do that. I'm just going to use this slider that closes both eyes at the same time. Now at the bottom here, I can open my head and click on properties. And that'll assure that when I do set keyframes, they're only going to be set on this track and not on every property that I could use. Furthermore, down here under types, I currently have mine set to T, R, O and A. Sometimes O and A are not selected. And that means you might not be able to see the property you want to animate. So make sure this is set to S we don't really need. So TIS I think is the default. So I'm going to tick S. I'm going to click O and A. And that shows me that usually all my morph properties, they're hiding in either O or A, other or aliases. So I just want to make sure I'm on the correct spot here. I'll open properties up and under post controls, head, I will find eyes. I'll find my eye blink. And this is the track I'm going to select. Now notice these little triangles here, as opposed to the circles. The triangles are markers for where keyframes are, but the circular things, those are actual keyframes. So everything has a keyframe on the first frame currently on frame zero. That's kind of good. So that's what we want. Now it's time to get started with actually animating this. The first thing I'll think about with animations is the rough timing. So an eye blink doesn't happen once every second because that would be really annoying. I'm going to make it so that my figure blinks once every two seconds. And that's still fairly fast, but we can go and, you know, amend that from there. If we're thinking in 30 frames a second, then two seconds means that'll be 60 frames. So my timeline needs to hold that. Once again, at the bottom left here under total, it's currently set to 31. I'm going to set mine to 61 and that'll increase the length of my timeline. 
So now we're going to think in terms of keyframe pairs. I know that I want my eyes to be open at the beginning of my timeline. And I know I want them to be open at the end. So I can set those two keyframes immediately. One at the beginning, one at the end. It looks like we already have one in the beginning, but just to make sure we do, I want to go and use this little plus icon and set a keyframe here. Now notice there's next to this, there's another key creation scope drop down. If you click on that, you can see that you can set a keyframe either on the properties, on the node, on the node recursive or the object. In our case, I don't think it makes much of a difference, but I'm only going to keyframe properties here. So I'm going to select that. Just something to keep in mind. There are different ways of setting keyframes in DAS Studio. So properties it is. I'm going to go and grab my playhead, left click and drag it all the way to the end. I'm going to go and set another keyframe here. So now I see that I have a keyframe right here at the end and one at the beginning. That means my eyes will stay open as I animate. Now perhaps at frame 10, I'd like my eyes to start closing. That doesn't mean I'm going to create a keyframe here that closes the eyes, because if I do that, and this is a mistake that beginners often make, now that studio is going to interpolate between open eyes on frame one and closed eyes on frame 10. That is not what I want because now if I do nothing else, my eyes just slowly open until I get to the end of the timeline. That's not what I want. So let me go and just undo that with control Z. So at frame 10, I'd like to set another keyframe at which the eyes are also still open. So this is important to realize we're thinking in keyframe pairs here. So click that. And then I'd like over the next two frames, I'd like my eyes to close. So I'm going to move my playhead forward, close my eyes with on the properties tab on the eye blink property. And now this interpolation happens over two frames. So the eyes stay open from frame zero to frame 10. Nothing happens. Then over the next two frames, we're going to close our eyes. Then maybe we'll leave the eyes closed for two frames. That means I need to set another keyframe here during which also nothing happens. So once again, keyframe pairs, nothing happens here. And then maybe over the next three frames, the eyes open again. So I'll move my playhead forward. Then I'll go to my eye blink slider and make sure the eyes are open. And now my eye blink happens over this duration. And the keyframe pairs is a good thing to remember. So the first two keyframes, nothing happens. Over the next two keyframes, something happens, namely the, the eyes are closing. Next two keyframes, nothing happens. That's what I want. And once again, the next two keyframes, eyes are opening again. And then nothing happens until the end of the animation. Let's click play and see if that kind of looks okay. So at this point, you can go ahead and make adjustments here. If you're thinking, hey, maybe my eyes are closing too slow or too fast, you can go ahead and change that. So if I wanted to have a faster eye blink, I can left click and drag these little circles here and just move them closer together. Like this one, maybe I want my eyes to open really fast like so, and maybe close really fast and I'll do this. And then this is what that's going to look like. That happens much faster now. I can also make it so that the eyes are maybe closed a little bit longer. I would do that by left clicking and dragging these last two keyframes, left clicking and dragging them a couple of frames over, and then we'll see what that looks like. So now the eye still blinks the same speed, but they stay closed a little bit longer. I think I'm going to go back to what I did before and have the eyes close over two frames and maybe also open them over two frames here. And I'm going to have them closed for two frames. I think that looks quite nice. And you can always go and adjust that if you feel it needs to. Now let's go and save this out as a post preset that only contains the eye blink so that we can then go and use it on a longer animation in which we want to have the eyes blink several times. In your content library, the easiest way to do this is with your figure selected here. Click the plus icon and choose pose preset. You may be thinking, hey, that only saves a static pose out. But no, it, DAS Studio can actually save animations as well as static poses with this. And if you give it a name, like say G9 I blink, then you get presented with this dialog, which lets you either save the whole animated range, like everything from frame zero to 60, or a current frame in the animation of wherever your playhead is parked at. So I want to save out the whole animation. Down here under properties, you can go and open Genesis up and save what you'd like to be included in this post preset or in this animation. So like I don't really want anything 
included other than the iBlink property. So I can go and open this up. And thankfully, I remember where my property was, which was under head. And then we had eyes and then we had iBlink. So this is the only thing I'll tick. If you leave everything selected, then that makes it difficult in case you had other properties in other keyframes, they would override what you want to apply this to next time. So I'm going to go and hit accept. And that now creates an iBlink animation here. So now what you can do is I'll show you several ways of how to repeat this. You can go and let's say I had a 180 frame animation. I'll go to the bottom here and type in 180 or 181. And I'll say I'd like my character to blink again, maybe here at frame 70. Then park your playhead here and then double click and load that eye blink animation in again. And what happens now is that DAS Studio is going to just add the same keyframes here just for the eye blink later on again. So now you can go and have Genesis blink several times. You can even go and you know do the next one here at frame 120. That's a possibility. Double click. And now you can go and you know Genesis keeps blinking while it does other things. So that's kind of nice. You can also copy and paste these keyframes over. That's also possible. Just as an example, I could go left click and drag all these triangles here. Those are not keyframes, those are just keyframe markers. Works both with keyframes as well as keyframe markers. Right click on this and select copy selected keys. Then position your playhead to where you'd like the eye blink to occur again, like for example here, and right click and hit paste. And then that'll paste your eye blink in that position as well. So that's one way to do it. Another way to deal with this eye blink is to save it out as an Annie block and then keep repeating the Annie block. And that's a bit of an advanced topic, but uh, I can show you briefly how to do this and then we can get into animate a little bit later on. Animate is a paid plugin that you need the full version of to be able to create any blocks. I already have one here, and when I hover over it, you can see that and that Genesis is in fact blinking just when I hover over this. But if I didn't have this and I only had the keyframes on my timeline, I can go and switch over to Animate and then right click anywhere in the gray area here and choose Create Any Block from Studio Keyframes. And then what happens is you get this little dialog that says Direct Copy or transform, I'll use direct copy, and then I don't use any translations or rotations, but I do use morphs and values. Hit done. And now Das Studio thinks about it for a second and eventually comes up with this blue strip here. And then you'll see that you have your eye blink here. But if you go back to the timeline, you'll see that your keyframes have disappeared. And that is because now this keyframe timeline isn't in charge anymore, but the anime timeline is. So this blue block here is now what has saved and stored your animations. And you can, in fact, go left click and just drag that out. And that means that wherever you see this little gray stroke here, that is where the anime block is repeated. If you go and keep playing this, now you see that Genesis keeps blinking every time there's another version of the anime block. But what you can also do is undo that collapse that to where it was. You can also go and save it out and then drag it onto the timeline at different intervals and even add variation to this. Let me show you what I mean. So if I go and save it out, first of all, right click and say save as new. And I'll just save that here. I already have a G9 I blink. I'll call this one G9 I blink demo perhaps. Then I can see that it gets saved somewhere at the bottom. It doesn't always refresh, so you have to just go and select something else. And then, then you know, there, there it happens. This is the G9 I blink any block here. If I go and right click that onto my timeline and just move it around, I can have multiple versions of the I blink here. And I can spread them out a little bit, add variation to it. But uh, Another interesting thing about the AniBlocks is that I can go and speed them up or slow them down. And that's kind of the principle of nonlinear animation. So if I wanted the second one to play back a little faster, I can select it once by left clicking in it. I can type in 120 and now my AniBlock gets played back a little bit faster. So this one is now shorter, but the whole animation is still in there. And likewise, the next one here, if I go and click that on, I can go and say, perhaps I want this to be 80%, so it gets a little longer. So if we do that, it's barely noticeable, but if you do this with other 
types of animation, then you'll see that the next one is a little bit faster, and then the one after that is a little bit slower, and you can also have these erratic pauses in between. So that's kind of nice to get all that variation in there. So animate is not necessary really for this, but I thought I'm going to round this little project off so that you know how to deal with either of these options. That was it. I hope this was helpful, and I hope you're going to have fun creating your own animations with Das Studio. I'll see you next time. Take care.